morning and welcome. We're very glad that you have joined us. As you come in this morning, feel free to, to say good morning in the chat. If you're watching from a device that has that chat feature, either on YouTube or Facebook or our new online platform, hopefully you've uh, been able to check that out. But that's a way that you can interact with those who are coming in and joining us by saying good morning. We're glad to be gathered online together. And we look forward to what this time has for us. I want to take the opportunity to use Micah 6.8 this morning to frame our worship time. So I'm just going to read it a couple times through. And let's allow these words to inspire our hearts in worship. Micah 6.8 O people, the Lord has told you what is good. And this is what he requires of you. To do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Lord, would you breathe your life into those words now as we hear them again and as we worship, Lord, would you breathe life into these words and breathe your life into our heart. Again, the words from Micah 6, 8. Oh, people, the Lord has told you what is good, and this is what he requires of you, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God.
the same God who never fails will not fail me and now you won't fail me and now in the waiting but the same God who's never late is working all things out is working all things out oh yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley yes I will bless your name same God who's never late, he's working all things out, he's working all things out, oh yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley, yes I will bless your name. song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring So worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus the name above every other Jesus, the only one who could ever say, so worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, oh, we live for you.
Yeah. 
Leviticus 6, 8. Oh, people, the Lord has told you what is good, and this is what he requires of you, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Let's lean into the words we just sang when we said, open my eyes, open my eyes in wonder, in wonder of what is right, in wonder of God's mercy. And as my eyes are open, can I walk humbly? May I walk humbly with my God? I believe that we are given three directives here as to how to build our life on God and on his truth and on his love and mercy. Micah 6, 8, one more time. O people, the Lord has told you what is good, and this is what he requires of you. To do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Yes and amen, may it be so. May it be so, may it be true of your people gathered here today. May we do what is right. May we love mercy. And may we walk humbly with God. So once again, I'm thankful to be with you this morning. Again, if you want to introduce yourself in the chat and say good morning, this is a good time to do it. We're going to head now into a time of recognizing our 2020 graduates. So enjoy this video and let's pray for those who have graduated this year. Well, congratulations, class of 2020. We are thrilled to celebrate this milestone achievement with you. Whether you've received your high school diploma or you've walked away from your college with your degree this year, we're so excited to be able uh, to celebrate that with you. And we look forward to the journey that God will have you on in the days, months, and years ahead. And so we want to pray for you as you move into that next phase of life. Creator God, we give you thanks and praise because of who you are and that you have 
made each of these graduates uniquely. They are your masterpiece, and you have made them for a purpose, and we pray that, that they would live out the call that you've given to each one of them. God, that they would live on fire for you, and that they would make a difference in the places that you take them and the positions that you put them in and in the relationships uh, that you put in their path that you might receive glory and honor, and that their life uh, might be lived in a way that pleases you. And so we lift them up to you, and we ask this in your precious and holy name. Amen. Once again, congratulations from all of us. Thank you, Pastor Nate, for that, and a prayer for our graduates. And a special congratulations to the graduating class of 2020. I know that you wish you could have graduated in a different way and under different circumstances, but I do know for a fact that God has great things in store for you. For those of you who are college students and we didn't have an opportunity to say our goodbyes, I want to thank you for the years that you have given us and the opportunity that we've had to worship together, to be under the teaching together. And it's my prayer that God's hand would be on you truly, that God's hand would be on you in the days ahead. We do miss you, but we bless you now into this next chapter of your lives. Welcome to Grove City Alliance Church Online. Once again, it is a pleasure um, and a privilege to be with you in your homes and uh, we just want to welcome you to this time as we gather together in worship and singing to our Lord, but also under the teaching of the Word. We do have uh, been having some announcements going out on a weekly basis through our e-news as well through as through some videos. And so I do want to let you know that if you are not receiving our emails, you can sign up for our e-news, and I'm going to show you a slide and how you can do that up here on the screen. And so this e-news, you can text in your email, or you can go to our website and sign up for it. But it's going to be very important that you sign up for our e-news in the days ahead, because we're going to be giving out a lot of announcements about what it looks like to once again go back to live services here at Grove City Alliance Church. So be paying attention to those announcements, and we want you to be a part of those. And so make sure to sign up for our e-news here today. Grove City Alliance Church family, many of you know that this past week uh, we have been mourning a loss. And if you haven't heard yet, Kevin and Kelly Houks, Kelly is our family life director heard the news of the passing of their daughter, Jenny Houks, from this life. And our hearts grieve with them. I want to thank the church family and their support for them, and they want to thank you for that as well. And uh, we're praying that God will take this devastation and bring good news out of it. Would you pray for those who were a part of the funeral, who were joining it through the live stream, that they would come to hear, not only hear the hope of the good news in Jesus Christ, but respond to Jesus Christ as their Savior. And so we do ask that you would continue to pray for the Halks family here in these coming days. In fact, we want to do so right now. Would you pray with me? God, right now, it is so hard to grieve socially distant. But Lord, once again, as we talked about last week, you're an omnipresent God. And so although physically we might feel like we are separate, spiritually we are very much connected at this time. And we do want to lift up the Houks family, the brothers and sisters, the cousins and the aunts and the uncles, and Lord, we want to pray specifically for them right now, God, that your hand of comfort and your, your wonderful hand of peace would fall over them and their family and their hearts this time. Lord, we thank you for the years that we had with Jenny. And Lord, we do ask that you'd bring good out of this, that the gospel of Jesus Christ would go forth and that many would come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And so, Lord, we lift them to you right now. We ask that your hand would be on our time here today. 
We thank you, God, that you are a God of hope. And today we place our hope in you. And we pray these things together in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Today, I've decided to take a pause on concluding our sermons on astounding faith and to bring a sermon to you on lament. And I think it's important, as you will see, why we need to do that here today. But I appreciate you joining us um, during this time. But I want to read a few verses to you about lament. And so just listen to these right now. This one comes from Psalm chapter 40, verse 13. Be pleased to save me, Lord. Come quickly, Lord. Help me. Psalm chapter 18, verse 6. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. Psalm chapter 27, verse 7. Hear my voice when I call. Lord, be merciful to me and answer me. Psalm chapter 28, verse 2. Hear my cry for mercy as I call to you for help, O God. Can you relate to some of these passages of Scripture? These pleas to God for help. Listen to me. To be human means that we will experience suffering. Life is not always what it's supposed to be. The world is broken Sin originated in the Garden of Eden, and it has affected everything. Relationships are difficult. Tensions come quickly. Losses, great losses, come into our lives. Loved ones depart. Diseases devastate. Scripture is brutally honest. And I love that about God's Word. God's Word does not sugarcoat things. God's Word does not cover things up. God's Word is brutally honest about the pains and the suffering of life after sin entered the world. But God has given us an outlet. That outlet is called lament. Lamenting. Have you ever lamented before the throne of God? What does lamenting mean? Well, let me tell you something. Lamenting is more than, okay, complaining. That's not what lamenting is. Lamenting is more than venting. Now, there might be some venting and lamenting, but lamenting is more than that. To lament as a believer is to cry out to God in our deepest doubts and despair, while fully trusting that God in his power has the provision to deliver us. So lamenting is crying out to God in our troubles and in our despair, while fully trusting in the power of God and his provision to deliver us. The dictionary defines lament as a feeling or an expressive expression of sorrow and grief. However, lamenting is not something our culture is used to. Rather than express emotions, we many times suppress them, hide them, distract ourselves from them, pretend that they don't exist, we seek false saviors to cover up these griefs and these emotions. We go to work and we throw ourselves into work so that we don't have to deal with the feelings of grief and pain. We throw ourselves into entertainment so that we don't have to feel the feelings of grief and pain. We throw ourselves into food. This is my, this is my outlet when I should be lamenting. Instead of, instead of feeling the anguish and bringing it before God, we try to control our circumstances instead of facing the grief and lamenting before God. We try everything except to face the pain, to lament. I grew up as a missionary kid 
When I was three years old, my parents went to the mission field in Brazil. And so I grew up in a life that had a lot of grief and lamenting. The lamenting was there because there was always a shift, always a goodbye that would take place in my life. And so missionary kids moved all around a lot. So moving from the United States to Brazil and then taking a home assignment and going from Brazil back to the United States. And in all those places, I was saying goodbyes, saying goodbye to relationships, saying goodbye to homes that I found a home in, saying goodbye to culture that I had found my home in this culture. And so in my life growing up, there was a lot of grief that was taking place deep down in my soul. It was my, the end of my 11th grade year in high school. I had just spent four years at a missionary boarding school called the Alliance Academy in Quito, Ecuador. That was going to be my last year there because my parents were taking a home assignment. So I was going to be spending my senior year back in the United States, knowing that when I graduated, I'd most likely be going to college in the U.S. So the end of my 11th grade year, I knew that all these friendships that I have built, and by the way, when you're, when you're a missionary kid and you make friendships with other missionary kids at a boarding school, I mean, you're as tight as brothers and sisters, and I knew that at that time, at the conclusion of that year, that I was saying goodbye to relationships that I most likely would never see again in my lifetime. Not only that, I was saying goodbye to a home that I had called home for four years, knowing that I may never go back, which by the way, I still haven't. And I remember boarding an airplane by myself, flying from Quito to Brazil, filled with grief. The airplane took off from Quito, landed in Rio in Brazil. It took off from Rio, landed in Sao Paulo where I went through customs. I boarded another plane in Sao Paulo and flew to my city that my parents lived in, in Porto Alegre, Brazil. I got off that flight, hugged my parents. It was good to see them. When they drove me home, I got into the house. I dropped my suitcase and I ran to the room. I collapsed on their bed and I wept and I wept. And I wept. I was lamenting before God. In fact, at that moment, there weren't even words that were coming out of my mouth. Have you ever lamented? You see, God gives this gift to come before the throne, to lament the griefs, the injustices that are around us. And there's much to lament right now. As I began to service, we began praying for the Halks family. And as, a, as the family, the church family here at Grove City Lines Church, there is grief over this loss. And we lament. For many of us, life turned upside down, right? All of us. The beginning of March it has not gone back to the same. Some of us have lost jobs. Others of us are concerned about our businesses. Others of us don't know what our retirement is going to look like. There are others who have graduated that are looking for jobs and there are no jobs available. You go through it. We're experiencing a lot of pain and grief and social distancing, lamenting. We need to lament. We're now facing riots and death and destruction and issues of racism in our nation and brutality. And right now, I don't know about you, most of us would say, I have enough of this. My heart can't handle this division. My heart can't handle the pain that I see around me and the desire to stand up for injustice. And, and believe me, as a church, as the body of Christ, it is our desire to take a stand against injustice because God is a just God. He is a righteous God. And so we lament. We cry out to God. He allows us to come before his throne with our grief and our pain. And scripture is filled with laments. I mean, we have a whole book dedicated to it. It's called Lamentations. Jesus lamented in the garden the night he was about to be betrayed. The Psalms are filled with lamenting. How is your lamenting right now? What I have found is that if we don't take opportunities before the throne of God to lament, 
are lamenting relieves this pain and this anguish, but a lot of it then turns into anger, hatred, division, because we have not taken the opportunity to come before the throne of God and lament. I would like to take a book, uh, take a look at the book of Psalms. And so if you have your Bibles, go to Psalm chapter 42. If you have the Bible app, look up our, our event on the Bible app, Grove City Lines Church. Our sermon notes are found on our page. If you have joined our new um, online site, our Grove City online site, um, our notes are also there on a tab. And I want to encourage you to pick that up right now. Psalm chapter 42 is where we are today. God's people need to know how to call out to him in crisis. And so we see that taking place here in Psalm chapter 42. Believe it or not, this is actually meant to be sung. This was a part of the, the music for the Israelites. But as you read this, you will go, man, that is different than any other song I have ever sung. Psalm chapter 42. Let me read it to you. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night. While people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day, the Lord directs his love. At night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Verse 11, why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. God, may your hand be on the rest of the sermon. Teach us, Lord, how to lament. Be with those who are lamenting right now as I speak. Spirit of the living God, would you attend to their souls? May they put their hope in God, my Savior, my God. Three lessons on lamenting from Psalm chapter 42 today. Three lessons. I had four but I'm bringing only three to you today, okay? So three lessons on lamenting. When we lament, we display a deep desire to God. As the deer pants for water, God. We see that right here in the scripture. He's not saying as I desire food, because we can go without food for quite a few days, but when it comes to water, we don't survive more than a couple days without water. He's saying, listen, like a deer pants for streams of water, God, my soul has this desperation for you. In the midst of chaos and distress, God, my soul cries out to you. So as we lament, our lamenting is displaying this deep desire to God. And notice it even in his language here. He's saying, listen, God, when can I go and meet with you? When can I go meet with God? And I believe that this verse is particularly important for us to hear today. Let me read it to you again. Verse 4 of Psalm 42, the second part of it says, How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One with shouts of joy and praise 
among the festive throng. Do you see that longing here? You see, for some reason, the, the writer of this psalm is away from the place, the temple, in which there was the worship of God. Okay, And so he's saying, I long for that. I used to go to the house of God. There's this longing for the special presence of God that is found when the people of God gather together and lift their voices in unison before God. There's a longing to connect with God again with the, the body of people who also desire to connect with God. Have you been experiencing that right now? Is there an ache in your soul that says, when can I meet with you, God, with the people of God again? You see, in lamenting, what we're saying is, God, I have this deep desire for you because you're the one that makes things right. And so this lamenting is showing our desire to be with the people of God and to be with God. And so the psalmist here is admitting that not being with the people of God, not being in the house of God, has, gotten, has placed him in a downcast cast place. That depression has settled in. Has that been the same for you? When I was in actual physical quarantine in my house, I don't know if you remember that. I brought you a sermon from my bedroom, okay? When I was in actual physical quarantine, I spent some time lamenting. I typed it and I wrote it before God. And this is one of the things I wrote down. Oh God, my God, why have you forsaken the church? Banned from meeting again with no chance of goodbye, our kids are asking why. I thought it was for a season, now there's no end in sight. The burden to reinvent already wearing me down. The needs of our community growing, we're all asking how. How can we be the hands and feet of Christ when our feet are banned to isolation and our hands transmit disease? Oh God, my God, we need you. That's lamenting. And I would encourage you, if you have not done so, we need to lament before God because a lament displays our deep desire for God. We acknowledge that he is real. We acknowledge that he hears us. We believe that he can fix this. We want him in this pain in our lives. Oh God, my God, join me here. And so when we lament, we, we express our desire for God. Secondly, when we lament, we should be completely authentic. The psalmist here has this desire for God, but he's also being completely raw and honest before God. And he lists many things for discouragement. Let me, let me just read what they are. Verses 2 and 6, he says, The distance from home and the house of God. Is, is a reason for his grief. Verses 3 and 10, we see the unbelievers are taunting him. Verse 4, we see that he's reminiscing of better days. I don't know about you, but I've been at home with my, my kids or my wife sometimes saying, do you remember January? Remember December? You know, so, he's, so, so there's this reminiscing of the better days. Verse 4, we see the the present absence of the spiritual highs that he had experienced in the temple. Verse 7, he has the overwhelming trials of life. Verse 9, he's saying, man, God, you seem so slow. Why do, you, why do I say that? Because he's saying, God, have you forgotten me? And so in a way, the psalmist is saying, God, it seems like you're moving so slow. Have we been forsaken? Have you forgotten me, your servant? Have you forgotten your people? And he goes on and, and authentic says, My tears, my tears have been my food day and night. My soul is depressed. It's downcast. All of your waves and breakers of the waves have swept over me and my soul. Have you ever felt that way? Maybe you're feeling like that right now. You know, there's this, there's this thing in the Christian world that says that to be depressed means that you lack faith. And that is a lie. 
There are very faith-filled people that still experience moments in their life when their soul is downcast. It's okay. You're not alone. I journey through those moments. Psalmists journey through those moments. David journeyed through those moments. Prophets journeyed through those moments. I mean, we see it in Scripture. Lamenting is authentic. I've always said it all the time. We, we come together and we, we say, how are you doing? And most of our comments are, I'm fine. Why? Because we don't want to get into what's going on in our souls. But when God asks you how you're doing, fine doesn't work. He knows the depths of your soul. He knows the feelings you're experiencing. So you better just be authentic before God. Be raw. Be honest before him. Now, just a disclaimer, being honest and authentic does not always justify the feelings that we have or how we feel about situations. In other words, while we might tell God that we are upset, mad, or even angry with him on what has happened, that does not always mean that we're justified in having that feeling. You understand what I'm saying? But what we're doing is we're bringing it before God and we're saying, God, would you change my heart? Would you change these feelings? Because right now I'm angry towards you but I don't want to be. And so the feelings don't not always justify what they're, you know, what, what they're angry towards, but allows us to bring it before God. People of God, Grove City Lions Church, there is a lot of lamenting happening on social media right now. You might not see it that way, but I wonder if you would look at it today with a different lens. And would you look at Facebook and would you see maybe some of the anger and some of the, 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 the words that are being said and realize that what's happening is there's people that are just lamenting. They're lamenting injustices. They're lamenting pain. And they're, they're bringing those out. And, and we got to be cautious not to be the lamenting police. Sometimes as the people of God, we need to be listeners to those who are lamenting. And let me tell you about the best listener of all, God. And if you're in a place right now where you're experiencing that anger and that pain and that grief, can I tell you something? It is at the throne of God. He gives you a gift. That gift is to come before him, to lament authentically, to have this deep desire from him and bring the grief before the throne of God. Jesus, when he was on the cross, said, oh my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? There's a lamenting that even Jesus brought before God. Do so. God will receive you there. Lastly, when we lament, we declare that there is hope. You see, we might proclaim openly our feelings, but we must also declare our determination to hope in God. So I want you to notice what the author did here in Psalm chapter 42. Psalm chapter 42. First of all, we'll look at verse 11. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Now notice this. Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior, my God. Then look at verse 5. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Listen, put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Now, this is the determination that we all need the, the author of Psalm 42 is speaking to himself. He's saying, listen, soul, put your hope in God. He, he is speaking this determination of hope to this downcast, depressed, deter, disturbed soul. Put your hope in God. Let me ask you a question, by the way. Anyone here today ha- that talks to themselves? Anyone? 
Now, you might be in a room right now, in a family room, and you might have people looking at you. Yeah, you do. You talk to yourself all the time. I listen to you in the kitchen. So I want you to say right now, you have scriptural proof that you are told and allowed to talk to yourself. It's right here. The author is speaking to his soul and saying, there is hope. Put your hope in God, my Savior, my God. Why? Because the future belongs to God. And as believers, as people of faith, as people who have placed their faith in Jesus Christ, we know our hope is grounded in Jesus Christ. Our hope in life, our hope in death rests on Jesus' life, on Jesus' death, and on Jesus' resurrection. We can have hope in our despair, in our depression, in the injustices, in the struggles, in the fears, because we can overcome these things, not our own strength, but because Jesus has already overcome. John 16, 33. Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Jesus saying, it's done, guys. I have overcome the world. I have victory over the struggle of sin. I have proclaimed victory over death. I am the hope of the world. All who call on my name will have the same hope, life after death. This is our Savior, Jesus Christ. Take heart. Even though trouble will come in the world, the world will not win. Sin will not win. Injustice will not win. These things will not win. Death will not have the final word. Even as tears fall, those whose hope is in Jesus Christ will yet one day praise him, my Savior, my God. One day, all sorrow, all pain will turn to rejoicing. Joy is coming. So, what might you do with that? What might you do with that? Some of you right now, you've been holding it in too long. It's like you take this can of soda and the circumstances of the world have just been shaking this soda can pop, for those of you who call it pop, okay? And the pressure is mounting. Lamenting is popping the bottle cap before the throne of God. Don't you know that your soul is wasting away? Bring your grief. Bring your lament before God. Pour it out before the throne of God. We need to let this out before God before it turns into hatred before others. Lamenting. A deep desire for God coming to him with complete authenticity and declaring that there is hope to a downcast soul. And so for a moment where you are, would you just close your eyes just for a moment in your room, You're sitting on a couch, maybe even a lazy boy right now, but just for a moment, what is something you need to lament What is a grief that you need to bring before God? What pain has been stirring in your soul? 
What has been happening in your community that you need to lament? What has God been stirring in your soul about what's going on in our nation that we need to lament? Many of us even need to repent of. What is God doing? What do we need to grieve? What do we need to lament? God says, come. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I want to pray for you right now. Spirit of living God, would you fall fresh on those who are with us right now through this online service? I know that there is much to lament right now. In fact, I would guarantee that there will not be many ears that are hearing this right now that would say, I have nothing to lament. I have no grief, no pain, no loss right now. Lord, forgive us for bottling it up, for covering it up, for lying about our feelings, for pouring ourselves into false saviors like being a workaholic or going to food or going to our devices to take our way, minds away from the grief. Forgive us from going to false saviors. We go to the true savior, Jesus, right here, right now. In the spirit of the living God, we take these laments, we take these griefs, and we bring it before the throne of God. And we cry out, oh God, my God, oh God, my God, why? Oh God, my God, have you forgotten us? Oh God, what about this pain? Oh, my soul is in anguish. Oh, my tears have been my food day and night. Oh God, why this in our nation? Oh God, why these injustices? Oh God, why this division? Oh God, where is the unity? Oh God, is there any hope? Oh, my soul is in anguish over all of these things. And God, we bring these things before the throne. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare hope over your lament. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare victory over your grief. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare defeat over the enemy of your souls. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy and any evil spirit does not declare that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that you leave and that you go where he sends you and that right now that the people of God would be free to lament before God and that right now the Spirit of God would stir in our souls and say, there is hope. In the name of Jesus Christ, as the people of God, we declare that we put our hope in God. We will yet praise him, our Savior, our God. And we pray these things together. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I want to I want us to say that together again, okay? We're going to put it down here on the screen. And so right now I want you to declare this. As a household, you ready? We place our hope in God. For we will yet praise him. Our savior our God. I am so thankful for the word of God. I am so thankful for the ability that we've had to connect together over these means. And we continue to pray that God will guide us and direct us in the days ahead. But you know what, something, I just wanted to say something to you. Do not lose sight of the opportunity that is before all of God's people right now to declare hope to a hurting and lost world. Be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Speak the loving words of Christ. May people see that there is a Lord, that there is a Savior that loves them, that made a way, and who gives hope and says, I have already 
overcome the world. It is a blessing to be with you here today. Please stay tuned for the slides that are coming up just as reminders of what's coming up and places that you can engage in. Would you walk with the King this week and be a blessing?